All right. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carl Harikoff from Stanford University, and my uh, talk today is on the feasibility of intravascular acoustic radiation force imaging. Okay, here's a brief outline of my talk. First, I'll cover the motivation and goal for this research and some background information. And then I'll dive into some simulations we did using field two and a finite element model to explore questions related to frequency, beam shape, and uh, tissue displacement. Um, then I'll cover uh, the construction of an intravascular RFE prototype transducer and some experimental results uh, in a gel elastic phantom and, and with a summary and conclusion. Okay, so the clinical motivation here is no secret. Coronary heart disease affects over 15 million people and is the leading cause of death in the US. Um, uh, involved with cardiac uh, coronary heart disease is atherosclerosis, which is a narrowing and hardening of the arteries, restricting the flow of blood and oxygen to tissue and hampering cardiac function. Um, what we're particularly interested in are vulnerable plaques characterized by uh, thin fibrous cap and a lipid rich necrotic core and these vulnerable plaques are prone to rupture and can cause conditions like myocardial infarction, pulmonary abnormalism, and stroke. So our goal therefore is to develop an IVUS transducer capable of high resolution RV imaging to detect and characterize vulnerable plaques. And I may have just screwed something. Uh oh. What I do. Oh. Uh, can't take me anywhere. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, so quick background. Our group previously attempted to generate RFE displacements using a modified uh, array that's commercially available from Volcano. So to do this, we connected 16 elements from the 65 element cylindrical array in parallel and drove them in unison in contact with a gel phantom. Um, and uh, unfortunately the displacements that were achieved were much too small for RFE imaging. So one of the primary challenges is simply to achieve a greater radiation force and displacement um, from an intravascular device. Uh, to achieve sufficient RV contrast for imaging. Okay, so here's the general approach. Um, so eventually we'd like to push with an array something like this. Um, so th this is a uh, field two, so it's not showing, it's limited in the angular extent it can show, so this normally is going all the way around 360 degrees. So we'd like to have an array or something like this that would um, generate the push and track the displacements at um, individual angles. But for our proof of concept, we're starting with just a solid cylindrical single element. Um, so this will be pushing in all directions at once, and we'll cover that some more. Uh, all right, so the first question we're addressing here, uh, we're going to look into what's the impact of frequency on an intravascular RP push. Um, can we uh, achieve acceptable like resolution and contrast of a soft object um, using a broad RP push since we're pushing at all directions at once. And um, and then ultimately, can we achieve an RP you know, radiation force displacement of at least 10 microns? So we used uh, simulations to um, attack these first two questions and then address the last one with um, building a prototype device. Okay, uh, so regarding frequency, we first considered a three and a half French cylindrical radiator of infinite length, and note that a cylindrical wave front uh, falls off as one over R uh, without attenuation. So then if you consider attenuation uh, in blood and the arterial wall, so consider those values and the fact that coronary arteries are two to three millimeters in diameter, um, then, uh, and then we considered, so these three cases, um, that were uh, first investigated related to IVUS hyperthermia. So we took these intensity values at these frequencies as our, our kind of initial uh, cases to look at. And then uh, from here we could calculate the body force F as a function of radial distance R and frequency. And we did this for both 
two millimeter diameter and three millimeter diameter vessels. So two different vessel sizes um, for each of these intensity and frequency pairs. So we had six cases total that we looked at here. Okay, so here's the equation for body force two alpha I over C. Okay. Okay, so here we have on the left basically the best case and worst case uh, intensity versus radius curves. And then on the right, we have the body force as a function of radial distance. So um, close to the transducer, there's blood, and then there's a transition into the artery. So the discontinuity in the um, attenuation coefficient, the absorption, is what accounts for this, oops, for the jump here in the body force. Okay, so it's, it's very clear what's the uh, two millimeter artery and what's the three millimeter artery, right, for those cases. All right, uh, so we then generalize this uh, looking at a wide range of frequencies. And so we basically normalized and said, well, okay, well, if we hold constant the surface intensity output from our cylindrical radiator over all frequencies, then what would we get? So uh, with the frequency increasing along this axis here and radial distance along the horizontal and uh, body force on the vertical, we get these results. So clearly you can see in both the two millimeter and three millimeter cases, as we go to higher frequencies, this is, uh, it appears to be advantageous. So basically, whatever fall off we're getting in intensity isn't hurting us the way it might be in, um, you know, extracorporeal probes, um, you know, where you're generally using higher, or sorry, lower frequencies to get better penetration and absorption at depth since our region of interest is so close to the transducer. Okay. Uh, we then look to investigate the tissue response using a finite element model. So to set this up, we first simulated the acoustic intensity beam profile using field two. So as I mentioned before, we can't, uh, uh, field two is limited in the angular extent of these uh, curved transducers that you can, you can simulate. So we, simulated the, the beam from this here, and then we took the center profile here and revolved it about the catheter axis to get this beam shape that, that would really be, you know, pushing radially outward in all directions with radius and force, so getting radial displacements. Okay, so that we then scaled the intensities that we found here in this profile to nodal forces, which we applied to this cylindrical mesh. Okay, so uh, the mesh head is, was this size, and we applied eighth, one eighth symmetry boundary conditions. So basically, uh, this surface, this surface, and this surface were all symmetry boundaries to reduce computational overhead. All right, um, so we enforced uh, arterial tissue properties on the uh, red region, so the bulk of our uh, model. And then um, we uh, created a ellipsoidal region here in blue uh, of a soft plaque. And so this is centered at a range of one and a half millimeters. Okay, so we then, using this mesh setup and this sort of beam input to our model as a, as a pushing profile, we solved using uh, the Alice Dyna explicit uh, time domain solver to compute resulting displacements. So again, just want to um, recall that eventually with the displacements we're generating, we would like to be able to track with a, an array such as uh, something similar to the volcano. All right, so here are results. Um, so once again, just going to quickly flash this up. So that's kind of where our transducer will be, and this is kind of what our push beam will look like in relation to this, and again, because of the symmetry, we're only looking at this from the kind of the top view. So the lesion is, is this ellipsoidal thing here. And so, um, let's see, whoops, how do I pull up the, there we go. Okay, so this is over the first couple milliseconds that we're running this. Oh, and before I start, uh, the color scale is in units of centimeters, so at the top it's really uh, 10 microns uh, displacement that it's showing, sorry. There we go. Okay, so what we're clearly seeing is a much higher displacement on the order of uh, 
10 microns at about uh, 0.15 milliseconds right there in our ellipsoidal soft plaque. We're seeing very significant contrast, very, you know, a distinct difference in the displacement between the, uh, you know, target of interest, this uh, soft lipid plaque, and the, the stiffer background arterial tissue. Okay. Uh, so now on to prototyping. So we first looked at what was uh, commercially available in terms of hard PZT tubes, so primarily PZT4 and PZT8. So uh, a number of options are shown in this table. We selected the um, 6 megahertz, 4.6 French tube um, from Morgan Ceramics. This was relatively close to the ideal 3.5 French, which the volcano array is. So our thought is, well, after we prove um, the feasibility or you know get proof of concept with a prototype, we would then uh, customize the um, the thickness for frequency and, and, and size and everything from there. Okay, so um, here's our prototype. We simply uh, took a 2.2 uh, millimeter long tube, it was 4.6 French, uh, radially pulled PDT4 from Morgan Ceramics, bonded it to a short length of stainless steel needle tubing, and electrically connected it using a coaxial, micro coaxial cable from TE Medical. Uh, we then Measured the response in a water tank using hydrophone and determined that the optimal drive frequency is seven and a half megahertz for this device. And then we placed it in a gel phantom uh, with this measured stiffness and uh, shear wave speed. Drove it with a Verisonics Vantage system over and then tracked the response over several uh, milliseconds. All right, so here are the results for five trials of this experiment where we're achieving a peak displacement of, uh, on average, of 19.6 microns. So um, there may be a slight, um, whoops, we're not, we're not sure exactly why these aren't decaying all the way to zero, but even if you were to adjust for that, we're, we're what easily clearing our sort of 10 micron uh, minimum threshold or goal we were trying to hit uh, for each, each run. So this leads us to conclude that our, um, intravascular ARFI is feasible with these small devices. Okay, so uh, in summary, our goal is to develop an intravascular ARFI device to detect and characterize vulnerable plaques. We performed simulations that uh, suggested that higher frequencies may be advantageous for this, and um, using field two and a finite element model, we found that even using a broad push, we could get significant. Um, or sufficient contrast in our uh, displacements. And uh, another important point is now that we have these tools developed, we'd like to uh, then use them to optimize, simulate um, both not, not only uh, pushing displacements, but also tracking to uh, investigate new transducer designs, optimize that. And so we built a prototype using off the shelf hard PZT tubes, less than five French, and achieved peak displacements well above our 10 micron uh, minimum peak. So uh, this is all to say that radiation force-based imaging is feasible using IVIS devices. And our next steps are to customize the transducer geometry, um, shrink the outer diameter to match the volcano, and um, go to higher frequencies than what was available in this prototype. And then also look into directivity between the push and track beams to achieve imaging. Uh, I'd like to thank our funding sources from the NIBIB and these individuals for their assistance. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.